I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the nozzle efficiency and then shall identify several factors those affect the nozzle efficiency. Now, if we try to recall in this module of this course, we have discussed about the nozzle in detail starting from the flow analysis through the nozzle, we could establish the design aspects of the nozzle. So, when there is a flow through a channel, whether the shape of the channel or the flow configuration is convergent type or it is having a shape of convergent divergent type or it is of divergent type. We need to our basic objective. So, if we try to write the flow of steam through nozzle. So, if we consider a flow of steam through a duct having shape like this. this is section 2 2, this is section 1 1 and we are assuming that the walls of this duct are insulated. So, there is no heat loss. So, we are assuming so this is the flow direction. So, we are assuming that the walls of the duct are insulated and there is no heat loss. What is the basic objective of having this particular device for the operation of the steam power plant? We have discussed that the steam which is produced in the boiler or steam generator that steam should be taken to the turbine for generating or producing work. Now, when steam is allowed to go into the turbine, it is allowed to pass through the nozzles and then steam jet which is coming out rather I said I shall say the steam which is coming out from the nozzle in the form of jet strikes the you know turbine blades and when there is a deflection of the steam jets, there will be a change in momentum. In fact, there will be a loss of momentum and that momentum will be absorbed by the wheel of the turbine runner. So, the basic objective of having this flow nozzle is to produce steam jet. That means, the steam which is coming out at the exit of the nozzle will have you know velocity which is rather the, the velocity should be good enough so that the jet will be having high kinetic energy before that jet strikes the turbine blades. So, now why I am why I am discussing this particular aspect again because you know uh, it is again a mechanical device. So, while someone is designing the steam nozzle, the designer must be careful to I mean careful about the efficiency of the nozzle. So, why not to look at the efficiency of the nozzle as by knowing this particular parameter we can predict what would be the kinetic energy or available kinetic energy of the jet at the exit of the nozzle. What is what is happening over here? So, 
as the stream is passing through this particular duct, duct of this particular shape that is you know initially we are having decreasing area, then again it is increasing gradually. So, area is increasing gradually. So, you know that at the inlet the conditions are velocity of the stream is C 1, enthalpy H 1, pressure P 1, temperature T 1 and we are assuming that the length of the nozzle is very small. So, this is L and if it is short you know nozzle then we can ignore the change in elevation. So, if the outlet conditions are velocity C 2, enthalpy H 2, pressure P 2, temperature T 2, specific volume V 2, specific volume V 1. Now, steam is having high enthalpy <coughs> at the inlet of the nozzle and that enthalpy should drop and at the cost of that drop of enthalpy, we are getting high velocity. So, now if we try to look at what is, so the objective is to get high velocity. So, if we try to mark it, so our objective is to get the velocity of steam leaving the nozzle should be high, so that the kinetic energy will be higher, higher is the kinetic energy, higher will be the momentum transport to the shaft of the runner and that that uh, eventually uh, produce higher amount of work output from the turbine. So, this quantity is very important and to have because still we are having some velocity at the inlet of the flow nozzle and we are having high enthalpy as well. So, H 1 is much much greater than H 2 and C 1 is much much less than C 2. So, these two quantity I mean we are playing with these two quantities using this device and with an objective of having higher C 2 at the exit. So, uh, you know, higher velocity of steam at the exit at the cost of the reduction of enthalpy at the exit. So, the entire objective is to have high kinetic energy if we write it per unit mass flow rate of steam. So, kinetic energy of steam at the exit of nozzle, this is half C 2 square, this quantity is per unit mass. Right? So, higher is the C 2, higher will be the kinetic energy. So, now question is, first let us look into the change in velocity of steam as it passes through the nozzle. Question is while we are talking about the efficiency of the flow nozzle that means, we need to look at the change in velocity of steam as it passes through the nozzle vis a vis the drop in enthalpy of steam as it flowing through the nozzle. So, if we go to the next slide. So, change in velocity of steam that is C 2 from C 1 and this change in velocity we are getting at the cost of the enthalpy drop. So, now let us look at the steady flow energy equation. So, we are writing S F E E steady flow energy equation and then we can write why because nozzle efficiency that means, we are having enthalpy drop that is the heat drop 
at the cost of that heat drop or enthalpy drop, we are getting the kinetic energy. So, basically you know energy is getting converted from its one form to the another form, one form from its one form to the another form. So, you know that this conversion if we try to write how much fraction of, so what is the fraction of kinetic energy that is available at the exit of the nozzle and what is the amount of kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is what fraction of the enthalpy drop. So, that is what is important while someone is designing the nozzle. So, now if we write it and if we ignore the heat and work interaction because already we have discussed that you know if we go to the you know uh, previous slide we can see that uh, there is no heat interaction and uh, there work is essential because to maintain a flow to maintain the flow in the presence of pressure we need to meant we need to you know provide work but that work is already taken into account in the enthalpy that you have studied in thermodynamics course so basically if we write it in absence of heat and work interaction we can write c1 uh, half c1 square plus h1 plus g z1 equal to half c2 square plus h2 plus g z2 and as we have you know assume that the nozzle length is short so that the change in elevation can be neglected so what we are left with we are left with c2 square minus c1 square divided by 2 equal to h1 minus h2 so what we can see from this particular equation that we are having this change in velocity at the cost of the enthalpy drop right so if we go one step further, so that means to arrive at this equation, we have assumed that change in elevation of two sections of the nozzle is negligible. So, then we can write that is c 2 square minus c 1 square by 2 equal to h 1 minus h 2 and since c 1 is much much greater than c 2 sorry c 2 C 1 is much much less than C 2. From this particular equation we can write C 2 equal to twice into H 1 minus H 2 under root. So, this is the velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle right so this is the so higher the enthalpy drop if we can design the nozzle in such a way that there will be higher enthalpy drop we can maximize this quantity which in turn will ensure that the kinetic energy of jet which is available at the exit of the nozzle that is at the inlet to the turbine blade will be high we will be discussing this particular aspect again when we shall discuss about the steam turbines. So, now question is this is mind it this h 1 minus h 2 that is kilo joule per kg. So, if we go one step further then we can write. So, that means we can write here that you know gain in kinetic energy. Okay, between any two sections right 
of a nozzle, this is equal to loss of enthalpy. of fluid or simply enthalpy drop of flowing fluid. So, the fluid which is passing or flowing through the nozzle the enthalpy drop of that particular fluid is nothing but the gain in kinetic energy of the uh, gain in kinetic energy kinetic energy of the fluid which is uh, I mean between any two sections of the nozzle okay so now we can go right one step further you know that is so that is we can write c2 equal to 2 into delta h and that is kilojoule per kg within back within uh, that that is under root. So, now we can write it what is the, so this is not in terms, so we need to convert it because this is velocity. So, our objective should be right the right hand side the, the quantity which is given uh, which is there in the right hand side in terms of in, in the unit of meter per second that is velocity unit. So, in unit of velocity. So, that is 2 into 1000 into delta delta h into joule per kg. So, what is joule per kg? So, if we go one step further, so this joule per kg that is Newton meter per kg right. So, that is we can write kg meter per second square meter divided by kg. So, that is meter square per second square. So, if we write here that is C 2 equal to 2000 into delta h meter square per second square under root. So, that is nothing but 44.72 under root delta h meter per second. So, this is C 2. Why I am doing this? Because when we shall solve numerical problem, we will be using this formula frequently that is why I have derived the expression of velocity in terms of the enthalpy drop, because I will be frequently using that is 44.72 into delta h under root under root delta h. So, this is the velocity. Now, let us question, let us look at. So, you know when we have I mean derived the equation, when we have analyzed the flow through the nozzle, we have assumed that the flow can be modeled by an isentropic process, but in reality the frictional effect cannot be ignored. So, let me tell you if we go back to the slide. So, we have assumed that there is a flow of a fluid which is steam and we have assumed that it is a compressible fluid and we have also assumed that the flow can be modeled by an isentropic process. Though there is no heat loss from the flowing stream to the surroundings because walls of this nozzle are insulated, but still we cannot ignore the frictional effect. So, long as the frictional effect is effect is there, it is very difficult to model the flow by an isentropic process. So, it is not the isentropic process. So, why now question is if the process is not isentropic, then if the process is not isentropic, say I am using different colors. So, this is enthalpy. So, if the process is not isentropic, then frictional heating will be there. If that heating is there, then the enthalpy at the exit of the nozzle should not be H 2, it should be H 2 prime. 
So, the enthalpy drop that is H 1 minus H 2 that we have assumed and assuming that enthalpy drop we could write the expression of velocity at the exit of the nozzle using this formula, but that should not be the case because accounting for the effect of friction that would be there in real application. The enthalpy at the exit of the nozzle will not be H 2, it should be H 2 prime. So, we are assuming that enthalpy should be something else not H 2. So, at what would be the enthalpy that is very important to know and since the enthalpy drops should not be delta H that is why that particular term is coming into the pack, coming in, into the picture that the nozzle will also have some efficiency. That means, ideally you are thinking we all are thinking okay, fine if the enthalpy of steam at the inlet is H 1 and we are assuming that the enthalpy of steam should be H 2 and that would be obtained from any Mollier diagram because the process is isentropic. But as I told you frictional effect we cannot ignore, we can try to minimize but we cannot ignore. So, considering the frictional effect it is it, it would not be you know practical to model the flow by an isentropic process and hence the enthalpy at the exit of this nozzle should not be H 2 rather it should be H 2 prime. So, that means, actual enthalpy drop will be something which is lesser than the ideal enthalpy drop and considering this aspect nozzle efficiency will be there. So, let us now look into that particular fact. Say consider a frictionless a frictionally restricted expansion. So, you know if we consider say a uh, frictionally uh, uh, so let me let me write here again consider the expansion of steam with friction. That means, not isentropic right. If it is not isentropic, let us look at the H s plane H s diagram. So, this is H s diagram Mollier chart Mollier diagram that you have studied. So, this is very useful diagram in the context of the calculation of steam properties, because from the same chart we can calculate the specific enthalpy, specific entropy for any given pressure, temperature and dryness fraction. So, this is very useful. So, now if we try to plot the process which is there in real flow when uh, that real flow is uh, taking place in a nozzle. So, if we write, so this is basically say this is two pressure because when there is a flow through a nozzle, say if we consider the nozzle is like this and this is section 1 1 and this is section 2 2, right. So, when there is a flow we are assuming that the inlet pressure is fixed, outlet pressure is fixed. So, for the given inlet and outlet pressure, okay, what we can do? You know, we can write this is P 1, say this is P 1 and this is P 2, right. Say this is x equal to 1 line right and you are assuming that this is the expansion. So, if we try to write it, say this is the point. So, this is isentropic expansion, this is isentropic expansion. 
say this is point 0.2, this is point 0.1. So, these two are the constant pressure lines and this is the line of dynamic fraction that is x equal to 1. So, now question is we are assuming that the flow is. So, this is the flow when there is no friction isentropic process and that is what we have used till now to model the flow through a nozzle, but in reality what will be the case we will be having we will be having some sort of irreversibilities and this should be 2 prime. So, you can understand that from this particular case. So, 1 to 2 prime that is the you know process in real application real flow and 1 to 2 is the uh, so this is the actual flow or a real or actual flow and this is the ideal flow right and we can say that the h 2 prime is greater than h 2. So, now if we assume that stream of having constant enthalpy at the inlet to the nozzle. So, if P 1 H 1 and P 2 these three are fixed, if these three properties are fixed. So, we know that the expansion will take place between this between these two pressures. So, when someone is designing the nozzle he or she knows that this is the pressure drop and the designer also knows the enthalpy at the inlet and then we can see that the actual enthalpy drop h 1 minus h h 1 minus h 2 prime is lesser than that the enthalpy drop due to ideal flow. So, the actual enthalpy drop is lesser than the ideal enthalpy drop and hence if we try to write it. So, delta h delta h actual is less than delta h ideal. If delta h actually is less then the velocity of stream at the exit of the nozzle will also be less and that is very important. Okay. So, now let us quickly see till now we have discussed about the frictional. So, by how we can realize by how we can visualize the effect of friction on the flow when that flow takes place through a nozzle. So, the effect of friction can be visualized on number 1 decrease the heat drop decrease in the heat drop right number 2 increase the increase in enthalpy at the exit of the nozzle right. Number 3 what we can see? So, enthalpy is increasing because h 2 prime is greater than h 2. Similarly, we can write s 2 prime is greater than s 2. So, the effect of friction can be visualized in rather I mean if we try to write if we try to discuss here that the effect of friction can be visualized on the decrease in the heat drop, increase in enthalpy at the exit of the nozzle. Similarly, increase 
in entropy at the exit of the nozzle. So, this effect is realized not only on the decrease in heat drop, but also increase in enthalpy at the exit of the nozzle, increase in entropy at the exit of the nozzle and finally, we also can write see we all have studied in fluid mechanics if frictional heating is there due to viscous dissipation uh, that that heating is there due to frictional effect that is viscous dissipation heating viscous heating the temperature of fluid will be increased so now if we con if we consider that the frictional effect is there that heat due to frictional effect will increase the temperature of steam at the exit of the nozzle. So, that means, exit steam temperature will increase and finally, very important point see basically the point 2 prime is closer to the x equal to 1 line. I have drawn x equal to 1 line only to indicate that it is because of the enthalpy increase, entropy increase, the steam temperature will increase. So, that means, steam will be closer to the saturated steam. So, the dryness fraction of steam will increase. Maybe let me discuss here. So, dryness fraction of steam will increase right. So, question is maybe we are not getting we are getting lesser velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle, but considering the frictional effect we are not getting you know the velocity that we are supposed to get, but we can increase the steam quality at the exit of the nozzle that is also very important considering the uh, turbine blade erosion problem and also the you know that uh, what I am telling steam temperature. So, this steam temperature or dryness fraction these two are almost interrelated fine. Now, question is what we have understood that C 2 prime is much less than C 2. So, this is the flow velocity of steam at or actual flow velocity of steam at the nozzle exit and this is ideal flow velocity steam at the nozzle exit. So, C 2 is not equal to C 1 uh, C 2 prime not equal to C 2 and it is because of this reason one coefficient is defined that is called velocity coefficient that is symbolized either by psi or k n. In some books it is symbolized the velocity coefficient is denoted by psi there are a few books wherein the velocity coefficient is you know denoted by k n and that is nothing but C 2 prime divided by C 2. So, you can understand the velocity of steam which is what is available at the exit of the nozzle in actual condition is always less than the ideal condition and ratio of these two velocity velocities is known as velocity co coefficient and the velocity coefficient magnitude is 0 0.93. So, k n or psi this varies from 0 0.93 to 0 
97 for different surfaces. So, depending on the why this value is changing from 0 0.93 to 0 0.97, the, the, it, it, it depends on the surface of the nozzle. So, in a surface of the flow nozzle, depending on the surface condition, the value varies. Okay. So, now coming to that important point that is nozzle efficiency. In fact, we started our discussion on this particular terminology that is nozzle efficiency. So, nozzle efficiency because nozzle is a mechanical device in which there is a conversion of energy that is the heat enthalpy changes. So, at the cost of the reduction of enthalpy of the flowing stream, we are getting kinetic energy. Now, suppose we are telling that this should be the enthalpy drop and at the cost of the at the cost of that reduction, what would be the change in kinetic energy that we can get from the steady flow energy equation. But accounting for the possibility of having not possibility rather accounting for the essential effect that is fluid friction, the actual gain in kinetic energy will be always less than the ideal gain in kinetic energy and that is how the nozzle efficiency is coming into the picture. So, the nozzle efficiency uh, let us let us now try to describe it instead of writing because we need to write the mathematical expression, but instead of writing the mathematical expression first let us now try to look at it from the graphical representation of the flow process in HS plane. So, if we try to go for the graphical representation of the flow process in HS plane. So, graphical representation of the flow process in a nozzle or let me write here in H s plane. Hmm. So, flow of steam through nozzle we are trying to represent the flow process in H s plane. So, let us now uh, okay. So, if that is the this is H, this is S and this is H plane H s plane. What I told you? I told you that P 1, H 1, P 2 these three quantities are fixed. So, if we have this is the P 1 and this is the P 2. Okay. So, this is P 2 and this is P 1 right and say we are taking one particular point over here that is point 1 and if we try to map the process 1 to 2. So, this is 2. So, that is isentropic process that is the ideal, ideal process, but in real application the process would be like this. So, this is 2 prime right. So, now this is basically you can see this is H 2 prime this is H 1 and this is H 2 right. So, basically you know that this is basically 
right. This quantity is H one minus H one minus H two. So, this is H one minus H two that is C two square minus C one square divided by two, right. And what about and say this is right. So, this is h 1 minus h 2 prime that equal to c 2 prime c 2 prime square minus c 1 square divided by 2 right. So, this is what we can write and what we can see that. So, because of the fluid frictional effect thermodynamic irreversibility will be there and it is because of the irreversibilities. So, basically if we try to write this is S 2 and this is S 2 prime. So, we can see that S 2 prime is greater than S 2 and H 2 prime is greater than H 2. Now, so basically what is the nozzle efficiency? Ideally, we are supposed to get this is the change in velocity because of this enthalpy drop, but in real case we are getting something else. So, the ratio of these two quantities is the nozzle efficiency. So, though whenever someone is designing the flow nozzle, considering the fact that the pressure at the inlet and exit of the nozzle that pressures are equal, pressures are fixed. So, someone is designing the flow nozzle enthalpy of steam at the exit of the nozzle is also fixed because that is coming out from the boiler. So, knowing all these three quantities if we map the process in this H s plane we can see that you know uh, the point 2 prime is going closer to x equal to 1 line dynamic fraction you know uh, becomes becomes higher steam temperature increases because of the frictional effect, but at the cost of that particular favorable aspect we are going to have compromised velocity at the exit of the nozzle. So, velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle is less and hence the nozzle efficiency eta nozzle that is defined as, as the very important term that rate of actual heat drop. So, basically rate of actual heat drop. or enthalpy drop. To that rate of actual heat or enthalpy drop to that due to isentropic process. So, rate of heat or due to isentropic process. Okay. That means, we can tell that nozzle efficiency is defined by as the ratio of the actual heat drop to that due to isentropic process. In other way, this is nothing but the actual enthalpy drop to that due to isentropic process. So, this is the nozzle efficiency. So, if we try to write, what we can write? we can write that this actual rate of enthalpy or rate of heat drop actual heat drop that is H 1 minus H 2 prime and this quantity is H 1 minus H 2 right. So, basically if we write and we also if we ignore the effect of C 1. So, basically I mean what we can write it if we write over here say that means, this eta nozzle equal to C 2 prime square minus C 1 square divided by 2 into 2 divided by C 2 square minus C 1 square. So, that means, it is coming like this because we have agreed that 
this is C 2 prime square divided by C 1 square C 2 square because so this is C 2 square. because question is C 1 is much much less than C 2. So, that means, the nozzle efficiency eta nozzle that is nothing but C 2 prime square by C 2 square that is psi square or k n square. So, that is very important psi square by k n square, where psi or k n is the velocity co coefficient that we have defined. So, if we try to summarize today's discussion that we have tried to discuss about nozzle efficiency. First, we have discussed to discussed why this particular terminology, why this particular aspect is coming into the picture. We have discussed that since nozzle is again a mechanical device, there is a flow of steam and to model the flow, we had assumed that the process can be described by an isentropic process, but in reality the frictional effect cannot be ignored. Accounting for this frictional effect, we have tried to map the process in the HS plane and we have seen that the gain in kinetic energy that is due to the drop in enthalpy in actual case is always less than that the ideal case. And it is because of this reason we can define one efficiency and that is known as nozzle efficiency and we have expressed the nozzle efficiency in its mathematical, I mean we have mathematically expressed the nozzle efficiency and we have seen this is nothing but the, the square of the velocity coefficient or uh, velocity coefficient. So, uh, with this I stop here today and in the next class we shall solve one numerical problem and we shall see what are the several effect, several several factors that that affect the nozzle efficiency. Thank you. Mm -hmm.